And they come in having won eight of nine. Arkansas snapped a three-game losing streak with the win last night to keep their postseason momentum going. Guy Mitchell will jump center against Henry Coleman the third, and we are underway in Music City. Tip stolen away by Dexter Dennis. Dennis had 14 in the last matchup with these teams, but 14 and 11, and an early drive by Marble. And there's Boots Radford. Best rebounding guard maybe in the entire country and second chance points for A&M early. And that's what makes A&M so dangerous as they attack the offensive glass because they have such a great rebounding guard in Radford. And in starting five for Arkansas, they've changed it again. They've used ten different starting lineups this season. The Mitchell Twins will both start on the interior. And that should be a good battle against Marble and Coleman of A&M. Kick out Nick Smith Jr. for three. Got it. And that's why this Arkansas team is a different team with Nick Smith Jr. Does so many things, but also spreads the court for him. Little floater off the mark. a and is going to track down its second offensive rebound. Been a steady starting five for Texas A&M, and we have a clock issue. Fantastic crew working this one, led by Doug Shouse, working his 24th SEC tournament. The vested Buzz Williams and his team went on a great run in Tampa last year. They don't need that same sense of desperation this season. But you got to figure, based on the success that they had finishing second in the league, did that chip on their shoulder as a program help motivate them through this calendar year? Uh, no question, but the non-conference disappointment, and they did not quit. They bounced back. They figured things out. Their rotations, amongst many other things, and they are the aggressor. But they got to find Nick Smith Jr., who is coming off of that game winner and playing with a ton of confidence. Seven straight start for Smith. Arkansas seven and three with him in the starting lineup and a big block by Mackay Mitchell. Yeah. He's the older of the two twins by a grand two minutes. And interested to see how Eric Musselman has said, Nick Smith Jr., you've got Wade Taylor, Devo Davis, their best defender has Boots Radford. Here's Radford. See what they do to get Taylor a touch. Here's up the screen from Marble. Nothing doing. So Radford will drive. And he finishes. Yeah, he's just so ambidextrous on the drive. You want to force him to that right hand? Good luck. He can finish going that direction as well. No coincidence that he and Taylor are on the same side of the floor, huh? Absolutely. You want to use those two together as much as you can. Great hands by Radford. Starts the steal. Marble finds it. It's a point of emphasis for Arkansas. They have turned the ball over an average of 15 times in these two matchups against A&M in the regular season. Home team won each one January 31st. It was an 81-70 win for A&M at Reed. And then Arkansas returned the favorite, a low-scoring game on February 15th. Remember last night when I said Ricky Council fourth was such a great dunker and the only guy I want to see in a dunk contest against him is that guy right there, Dexter Dennis. We've got some high-flying athletes on the court tonight. Black gets it inside to Mitchell. This is McHale. They bring a double from the baseline. Radford late to get out on Smith. But Arkansas can't make him pay. No numbers. Taylor kicks it out, though. That was an important deflect deflection by Black. He saved the layup just with the back tap. Thanks to the offensive rebounds, the Aggies have outshot Arkansas seven to three here in the early going. Shot clock at five. Marble trying to muscle his way in at two. A leaner and get down by Mikael Mitchell. The Mitchells have played well in this. Matchup, they're big guys, but because AM does not have pop bigs, they're closer to the basket. That's a comfort level for both the twins. 
Time to embrace the F brought to you by Regions. And what role does the fast break play in the success for Arkansas? Well, you see in the win, they had 21, and in a loss, they only had six. And AM attacks the offensive board so aggressively that if you can get that rebound, you can be off to the races and take advantage. If they get double digit points there, I think the Razorbacks can pull off an upset. Ricky Council, the fourth, has it rattle out. And Arkansas did such a good job not settling from three in that Auburn game, but so far every one of their attempts in this game have been from deep. Dennis leaves it short. Council into Taylor, offensive foul. We expect a tight one here in our third quarter final of the day. That's what we have early in downtown Nashville. A ballet studio, an architecture firm, and homemade bar. Are a favorite to make it to Sunday here in this tournament. And Alyssa, what's great about that story is when you brought it up with Wade Taylor, before you could finish your first sentence, he finished the phrase. This is something not just that the coach says, but that they all live gets them motivated when they think about that phrase and it's something that again buzz has really instilled with this team as soon as i asked wade about it he said don't fight and he said yeah from the middle of the ring we're not doing that we're not getting back to the recording well, there will be some fight tonight not just in this one but in our nightcap tonight with vandy in kentucky loose ball picked up by arkansas and a foul in the open floor charged to wade taylor the fourth which is first and right before that break when Wade Taylor stood in there with the eyes wide open taking that charge That's what the Aggies do. They die for loose balls. They take charges And they load up so much on the defensive end they protect that paint. They have no middle drive concepts It's gonna be more difficult than ever for Arkansas to get right there last ball screen in the middle of the court Guy Mitchell with the slip in his first bucket. He had 11 and 9 in the last matchup between these two Planned substitution pattern, we'll explain that in a moment, but the Aggies with two subs ready to check in. Radford left it behind for Marble, and Arkansas has another chance in transition. And that's going to be the second on Taylor. And it's so difficult to penetrate off the bounce to this A&M team, so what's Arkansas do? We're going to penetrate it off the pass. Mitchell, not a guy they run a lot of... Ball screen, pick and roll, action for, but you got to be creative if you're going to make this Aggie team pay for loading up inside. And with this particular lineup for Arkansas, you do have some shooters on the perimeter. And what athleticism they have. Devo Davis, Anthony Black, Nick Smith Jr., Ricky Council the fourth, all on the court at the same time. Man, that is frightening for an opponent. Another one coming for Smith, 78% from the line on the season. Third-ranked recruit in the country when he left Jacksonville, Arkansas, to come to Fayetteville, the highest recruit in program history since Corliss Williams. A great feature on the Hog Pod just a couple of weeks ago, talking about his dad being a college player. He spent so much time around the program at Jacksonville State. He said, I learned the game by being in that locker room, just four or five years old, and then his dad... When his play created, because of injury, ended up being a GA for his college team. Radford, mid-range, good. Six of A&M's eight have come from Radford. Similar to the shot he right. hit to win it last night. Yeah, he can make tough twos. He can elevate over the defender. And in the world we live in today, everybody says no mid-range shots. Well, that's an exception to the rule. He can make them. Wade Taylor still on the floor with two personal fouls. Buzz did not take him out. Here's Garcia getting underneath. Taylor gets stripped, turns into a two-on-two. -two. Mid-range again. If you're Wade Taylor, 
how do you play carefully with two personal fouls? Well, he's got to make sure he doesn't over penetrate and get a charge But when he goes in there, they are in gaps. He's got to be able to penetrate and kick Coleman running jump hook blocked by Mitchell. It will stay with Texas A&M Again, those Mitchell twins have played well in this matchup and you see there When they don't have to close out on a shooting big then they can play a step off and be there waiting on that type of one-two dribble drive that these Aggie big man can do. Taylor to the bench, pardon me, yeah, Wade Taylor to the bench. It was the third block for Arkansas in the first seven minutes. And got a jump ball, good hands by Makai Mitchell. The possession arrow takes it the other way. Eric Musselman's going with a koozie on the sideline this week, huh? <laughs> they keep it cool. What a happy coach he was yesterday, huh? After that three-game losing streak to close out the regular season, it was not a happy locker room. But you saw the joy and the excitement. I think it was more than just winning a game in the conference tournament. I think it changed the mood of their entire postseason with that huge win over Auburn. What a complex season for this Arkansas program, especially when it comes to personnel and trying to get this team to gel. Beautiful finish by Anthony Black. Right. And they had the seal down low as Arkansas had the mismatch. They boxed out right there and really created a driving lane for Black. Hogs by five, largest lead here in the early going. Radford got tripped on his way in. And it is not easy penetration for either team, but both times, or both players, Taylor and Radford, when they're driving in there, man, is it tough for them to get a clean look without a ton of help coming. Ricky Council's going to have to take a seat. He picked up his second. So much depth in that Arkansas backcourt. You take Ricky Council on the top scorers in the league out and replace him with Nick Smith Jr. Andre Gordon with the left. High off the glass. What a tough take that is from Gordon. He's playing with a lot of confidence as well. I mean, he came in his freshman season with maybe different expectations than where he is now as a senior, but make no mistake about it, he is a leader and a key contributor for this Aggie team. Jordan Walsh got cut off by Marble. Four of the Razorbacks' eight makes have been from deep here early. Gordon got into Smith. With one, got a hurry. And Radford will bring it up for a &M. Dexter Dennis steps through. Marble kept it alive. Radford smothered in the paint. Push ahead to Mitchell. Mikhail Mitchell throws it down. And the active hands by Arkansas just getting a ton of deflections in the paint. If you're AM, you get in there, you better be strong with the ball because the Razorbacks are swiping actively. Wide open three, Anderson Garcia. Evo Davis pulls it down. Aggie's propensity to go to the rim has given Arkansas some opportunities to run. Marble jumps out on Black for the double. Open three, Devo Davis. It is an eight-point Arkansas lead. Well, you do that double team, and oftentimes you can bottle somebody up, but when you have a six-seven point guard, he sees over the top and gets the hockey assist. Fitting, since we're in a hockey building. Here's Marble. Good bounce pass and a reverse layup. For Anderson Garcia. Really nice interior pass there. That's your five man making a bounce pass in traffic. Well done by Marble. Couple of planned subs at the other under 10 opportunity for AM. Everything is scripted for Buzz Williams when it comes to substitution patterns. Leaves nothing to chance or emotion. Nick Smith lobs black undercut by Garcia. And cooler heads will prevail. 
Well, that was a rough and tumble play for Anderson Garcia to pick up his first. Emotion high. Play is high. And Nick Smith, game winner last night, off to a good start tonight for Arkansas. Hello, friends. Al Pernell here, the sausage man. We've been making the best country sausage in these parts for general line for Arkansas. And the Razorbacks will have possession after these two free throws, thanks to the flagrant. Second team all SEC selection. Well, Eric Musselman's got to be thrilled with the start of this game. Yes, AM has made you take more threes than you ordinarily do, but you've connected on three of them. I mean, this is an Arkansas team that gets 20% of their points from three. That's 358 in the country out of 363 teams. But Nick Smith getting the lid off the rim early, I think established a lot of offensive rhythm for this team. The blueprint for both programs has been similar over the last couple of years. And let's get to the free throw line. Yeah. Aggies lead the country in makes and attempts this year. Arkansas was one of the best in the country last year. They haven't had the same amount of success in getting to the line this season. But I think because they've lacked three-point shooters, teams have sacked off, so their penetration and getting angles and getting to the line has been more difficult. Now with Nick Smith Jr. back, I think they can get more advantageous in that category. Mikhail Mitchell has four early for Arkansas. And a hold on Jordan Walsh should be his first. Walsh battling back issues, took him out of the game for a moment last night. It's been a lingering issue for him, but good to go this evening. Here's Dexter Dennis, transferred from Wichita State. He's a little miffed, and the team is miffed. He didn't make the all-defensive team. Versatile defender. For a &M right now, this is the first time I can remember in conference play where both Radford and Taylor the fourth are on the bench. Yes, Wade Taylor has those four fouls. But two with fouls. That, excuse me, two fouls. But with Obasiki now healthy again, it gives you that depth at that position. But this is a lineup that they're not accustomed to playing with one another. It's a little off kilter. Well, this is how the Texas A&M rotation went in a recent game. And this is a planned rotation for Buzz Williams. He said it helps him from getting emotional. But also, the players know exactly what their playing time is going to look like. It's a script. At 15, you're coming in for this guy. At 12, and what he wants is go get guys and get back guys. And as a group, they like to be go get, which means four guys going to the offensive glass, where they are top ten in the country at getting offensive rebounds. This right here would be one of those get back lineups where you send three guys to the glass, two guys back. Already had six offensive rebounds in this game, but that was with Radford on the floor. Walsh leaves his way through. You would think, well, and here they are. Radford will return after we get back from this television timeout. But then AM gets a foul charge to Marble. Yeah. Sir, you have run out of eligibility. <laughs> no, I'm a transfer. <laughs> well, portal go, open up. <laughs> go back in the yeah. portal. Yeah. Coach was messing me over at my last school. <laughs> I had to go find greater pastures, man. Well, their phone's blowing up now. <laughs> Arkansas with an eight-point lead. This is uh, thanks to Hogstats, the fourth top 25 opponent in a five-game stretch faced by Arkansas. That's the toughest stretch since 99-2000 season. Little floater goes for Nick Smith Jr. He is something special. He's got 11. Well, this is scary for the rest of college basketball world. Nick Smith Jr. is finding his rhythm, and he can make shots that just other players on the court can't. Arkansas was 8-10 and 10 in the league in the regular season. 
Back to back trips to the Elite Eight. They will be a trendy sleeper pick if Nick Smith keeps his role. Well, this is what you want if you're a defense. Hey, let's force a tough contested two. Problem is, it's Nick Smith Jr. taking it. And this Arkansas team knew bringing him back in mid February, that's a little bit too late for comfort of him being healthy and ready to go because you had already established your rhythm, your system, but the ceiling's so much higher, you had to have some of those growing pains, which they did in the regular season, and see them starting to hit their stride as we speak. And the experiment of getting that chemistry right, it was a big time block by Anthony Black. Eric Musselman had Nick Smith at his disposal again late in the season. I, I don't know if Muss was confident when Nick was out and out in L.A. trying to get uh, some work done on his knee. If he was confident he was ever going to return, then he did. And the team yeah. had already played together. Shot clock is late here for Taylor. It's at one, and it's blocked by Nick Smith Jr. And so then to mold yeah. that chemistry and get this team to this point, that's great coaching. It's a delicate thing, and the rest of the team has to be willing to bring back a superstar but when he's making plays like that, you can tell how much he wants to win. And this was a team that had their foreign trip in the offseason. So they got to bond with one another. They realized what he could do. He's an alpha dog. But if you're Ricky Council the fourth and others that have to take a slightly reduced role, it just shows that you care more about the team and winning than you do about your individual stats. And you're starting to see it pay off. Six blocks for Arkansas already tonight. They had 13 in their matchup with A&M in Fayetteville. Obasaki, I count that as the seventh block. That, that's the other team's point guard, Anthony Black, six seven, just affects the game in so many ways. Fade away for Coleman, tough shot, and he got it. That is tough, and they needed one. And to your point about the Nick Smith and whether or not he returned, he didn't play in the Maui Invitational. Arkansas went two and one. It was a good showing. They lacked confidence out of it. But I was told that at that time, still unsure of what his knee was like and if he'd play, they had a closed-door scrimmage. And he dominated. <laughs> and he looked as healthy as anybody because he was the best player on the floor. So there was a lot of confusion about Nick Smith's availability. There was no confusion about his ability. Yeah, and a projected lottery pick. I mean, we had a game at Auburn. We talked to a couple NBA scouts like, no, nah, I've seen this story before. He ain't coming back, man. He's not right. coming back. And give credit to Nick Smith Jr. for coming back this late, and this is why you do it. For that moment he had the other night, a game winner, and plenty more highlights ahead for him in this postseason. Out of North Little Rock High School. And Jacksonville, Arkansas, which has produced some talent. How about Tyree Appleby? Now at Wake Forest, started at Florida, had the assist in a game yep. winner in the ACC tournament a couple of years ago. Devontae Davis came on Allen. North Little Rock, he was a Gatorade Player of the Year. Big time talent there. I will say, look, Nick Smith Jr. changes this team. And while it hasn't been the most aesthetically pleasing season for the Razorbacks, it's guys like this, Anthony Black at the line, Devo Davis and others, that have kept them in the NCAA tournament projection, even without Smith, to where you just get better when he comes. It's not as if he's the savior, but you are better with him. And him trailing by 10. Finished second in the league to Alabama. Knocked off Alabama in the regular season finale. And Dexter Dennis trying to find him some momentum. Buzz Williams runs out to midcourt to get a timeout. Dennis three is huge for the former Shocker. Four years at Wichita State. Well, the culture at Texas A&M was there. Yes, they were successful in the transfer portal like Dennis, but they had so many guys coming back. So he was coming to an existing family and culture as opposed to having 10 transfers. Everybody's trying to get to know one another. And that consistency from last year's roster to this year makes that transition much easier for a transfer. It's kind of like Ron Slade joining the SEC Network. <laughs> Except we had a lot of culture issues. <laughs> <laughs> I blame Dari for all of them. Smith is able to dish it to Mitchell. Good ball movement, corner three. And it's rebounded by Henry Coleman the third. Interior presence for AM, both transfers. Coleman came from Duke a couple of years ago. Marble from Michigan State. Here's Coleman. And that's going the other way. 
And the interior defense by the Mitchell Twins has been great in this game. They've gotten their hands on balls. They forced jump balls. And here it is. He's just going to move his feet. They're going to try to take him off the bounce. Says nope. And then the quick hands as well. And um, not able to get themselves to the free throw line nearly as much as they have been all season. Zero free throw attempts so far. Black lost his man. We got a foul on the rebound. It's going to be charged to Coleman and perhaps an injury for Arkansas. What a sequence because Buzz Williams wanted a foul on that opposite drive by Coleman. And Makai Mitchell being helped up by his teammates. Watch 15 on 15. Well, that's one way to check out. Golly, it's a box out. That's physical right there. Let's take a look at that one as well. I mean, we had a flagrant already for excessive. And I love a physical game. Would they treat that as an excessive box out? I prefer not because you're going to have a lot more physical box outs in this game. And if, yeah. if that sets the precedent, you're going to have to keep a close eye on the rest of them. While they look at that, what is a and missing on the offensive end? Just 36% shooting here in the first half. Well, you've come into this game with their backcourt duo. So it puts Mekhi Mitchell at the free throw line. He had 12 points in the win last night. He had only scored four points in the previous three games. Knocked off Arbor in a highly contested match. <laughs> Mitchell just gave fake daps to everybody that wasn't at the free throw line. Yeah, I've seen guys dap up two invisible guys, but not the two behind them. Yeah. Wow. We've been going to ghost screen a lot. Is that <laughs> ghost fives? That's right. Are we overusing it at this point? Ghost dap? Largest lead of the game for Arkansas. Out of place. Hello. Goose Givens found that pass. <laughs> Give my man the ball. Let's go, Goose. Well, the third turnover for Arkansas. We mentioned earlier how they've averaged 15 in the first two matchups in the regular season, so they've done a better job. And while no turnover is a good one, at least that was a dead ball variety. By the way, good thing that it sailed over Tony Delk's head. He's sitting courtside, too, because if the former Kentucky star would have gotten his hands on it, he would have shot it. <laughs> a little clear out and some space made by Solomon Washington who converts. Yeah, see, even that, I, that, that's a heck of a clear out with the elbow. And Mitchell's Asking the official, like, hey, man, I was standing right here. But Mitchell has been so good building a wall down low. No easy twos. So this A&M team, they will not let you drive middle. They are forcing everything baseline. A jump hook for Smith, and it ends up in Mitchell's hands. You were saying earlier that this Arkansas team loves to drive right down the side of the lane. Yeah, they want to force this. That's a good job there by AM. Keep them off that lane line. Shot clock at one. Got a hurry. He. And it ends up in the Aggies' hands. Taylor playing with two fouls. Used every bit of the rim to get that one home. That's his first bucket, and it comes at the 313 mark. Meanwhile, Anthony Black having issues getting back to the bench for this timeout. Holding his left ankle. Concern for the Arkansas superstar freshman here in Music City. Gatorade Fit. Fitness starts from the inside out. The next time they have a rules change, they're this close to putting boom, boom, boom <laughs> into one of the appendixes. All right, so it has been physical. We've had two flagrants called against Texas A&M. Buzz coaches a very physical style. This is a physical league across the board. Does that change how A&M plays? Well, I think what could change the way A&M plays even more is what the Arkansas Razorbacks are going to have to do with Anthony Black after turning that ankle. I mean, top two point guards in the league right now are Anthony Black and Wade Taylor the fourth. And now all of a sudden, Black being out. 
I think they have a little bit of an opportunity because that's not Nick Smith Jr.'s primary most natural position. And then went to the zone for the first time. That's a 2-3. They also have a, a matchup that looks more like a matchup man. Buzz is going over the finer points of that zone at shoot around this morning. They're the only team to use their shoot around practice here at Bridgestone today. Kentucky did practice. They got on the floor Belmont. Shot clock at five. They got Bandy to close the night and a strip by Davis. They're going to get him for a foul. This is the injury to Anthony Black a moment ago. Watch his left foot. Hmm. Unfortunate. One of the most exciting players in the SEC, too. I mean, he's got a lot of fight in him. I've seen this kid on the road. When they're down, it doesn't matter. He plays all 40 minutes. Typically, a freshman, you got to worry about them getting their head down. And, and will they give consistent effort at such a young age? That has never been a problem with Black. At 19-6-6, six six, this is the second Razorback to put that up in an SEC tournament over the last 25 years. Radford gets them both down. Ooh. Washington was thinking about the gamble on the pick. And the loose ball will go to AM. And the Aggies, as usual, finding momentum from their defense. Yeah, they've got two empty possessions because Arkansas has no point guard. And Eric Musselman has seen enough. Said, hey, you good, Anthony? Yeah, coach, I'm ready. Let's go. Try to settle things down as they watch their lead deteriorate. That is a minus four with Anthony Black on the bench in about a one-minute span. Six-nothing A&M run. Alyssa, what he got on the Razorback? Yeah, Coach Musselman was pretty fired up in that last timeout, guys. If you know him, he, you know that he wants to see his team crashing the glass. Really upset about the one-versus-ten offensive rebound ratio that Texas A&M is winning right now. He also was willing his team to finish this half. You remember last night, Auburn went on a bit of a run to close the Razorbacks' lead going into the break last night. He sure did. Made it close. Tigers are able to seize the momentum. Four straight stops for AM on defense, forcing three turnovers and a miss from three. Nick Smith Jr. going to work. Into the paint. Little runner. Again, we talk about the no middle principles. Easier said than done. When you switch your big man out on Nick Smith Jr., he takes advantage. Well done by three. Dennis working on Walsh into traffic. Arkansas with the takeaway. Eric Musman must have been known for trying to exploit matchups. And so AM switches so much. I think he can get some good looks in ISOs despite such a loaded up help defense. Nine turnovers for the Aggies here in the first half. Walsh finds the cutter. It's Devo Davis. Blocked by Dennis. Walsh again. This time he'll keep it himself and he draws the foul and will go to the line. Well, that all took a blow to the left ear. That all starts with a really aggressive cut off that baseline corner. I mean, that is Arkansas's offense. They do not stand and watch. They cut so aggressively from those corners and those wings. That time leads to an offensive rebound opportunity. Walsh at the line. 71% free throw shooter on the season. He was 6'4", Jordan Walsh, in seventh grade. He said, I always played up and with older players. And... To get on the floor with older players, the first thing you had to prove is that you could play defense. So that was instilled in him early. Get on the court, play D first, let the rest of it come. And he's taking great pride in what he does on both ends of the floor. Two for two from the line. Imagine those Saturday mornings as a seventh grade player and having to go up against the walls. <laughs> Can I skip the game today, Mom, and just <laughs> go to Tom's house for the sleepover? Taylor blocked by Black. Eighth block of the game for Arkansas. They came in averaging just a hair over five rejections. And Wade Taylor fourth is just seeing no daylight. He has been able to get in the paint, but it's been getting a shot off that's been the problem. He's one for eight, and I got to think three to four of those seven misses have been off block shots. More rejections in Damian Fishback's junior high dating life. <laughs> Damon, we know that's not true. You're the glue to this whole thing. Here's Dennis. Another block! Out front for Smith. Step through. And a follow with the left for Mitchell. 
And that's one of those fast break points that they've got to try to get. A&M loves to attack the rim. They go for the offensive rebound. You have opportunities to make them pay on the other end. Radford forced to give it up. Washington dumps it inside. And a good-looking bucket for Henry Coleman, the third. Four on the clock. Push ahead for the Hogs. Walsh sidestep three. Banked it in! What a half for Arkansas! And they'll hit the locker room with a 13-point lead here on this quarterfinal Friday. Being important points, especially with those two early three balls where A&M wants to force Arkansas to beat them from deep. And of the 19 missed field goal, nine of those rejected. Only two free throw attempts for A&M. They average 19 makes and 25 trips to the line during a game. Aggies held a 37% shooting in the first half. One of five from deep. Dexter Dennis hard into Mitchell and he'll get the whistle. Well, Mitchell's starting the second half. That foul is on Mikhail Mitchell. Well, when you close out on Dexter Dennis, yes, he's a capable three-point shooter, but not a guy I think you need to leave your feet on on the pump fake, and that's what opened up the driving lane. Two coming for Dennis, 80% on the season. Unless he had a chance to catch up with Buzz Williams at the half. What did he say about that first half? Yeah, I asked him what he really focused on with his team at the break. He said, well, we have nine turnovers. They have nine blocked shots, which is basically a turnover because you can't get an offensive rebound or get to the free throw line, which, Tom, you pointed out, they've only been able to do twice so far. He said, meanwhile, we're still getting more shots up, but if we don't to get better at the rim, none of that matters. Really emphasizing being better on the rim with this team. And they're mixing it up defensively. Went with the one, two, two, three quarter court, and it forced an Arkansas turnover in the half court. Those are difficult passes to complete. Is that baseline pass, whether it's to the corner three or to the opposite block? But that's what's open against this Texas A&M defense. Boots Radford played for Buzz at Virginia Tech and no look bounce to Coleman. He got blocked and then Marble and Mitchell got knotted up. Getting good looks at the rim. Two for two in terms of getting it into the paint. Just got to convert. That's a charity strike. It's the first on uh, Makai Mitchell. Hey, you know our tease before every session here in Nashville has been we're not just a football league where even the football coaches are watching this game tonight including Shane Beamer who texted just as a nice little reminder Henry Coleman's dad Hank played football for Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech back in the early 90s 91 to 95 it's a guy that should have a hard hat mentality handed down throughout the family Well, I think they would approve of the physical play with the football coaches in this one. No doubt. Maybe, maybe not the uh, intentional fouls. They'd like to see a little more leeway there. Smith off the mark with the three. Boots Radford at just 6 2, one of the best short rebounders in all of college basketball. Kick out, Radford three. I think on this end of the court, Tom. The Razorbacks, half of their shots were from beyond the arc in that first half. I think they got to be careful about not taking the bait. they got to get to the rim themselves. They are not known as a three-point shooting team. Arkansas 5 of 13 from deep. Touch pass to Mitchell. Nick Smith is just so good at getting it out of his hands in less than half a second. That time, finds a big man on the slip. Ninth assist for Arkansas on 14 made field goals. Radford, nowhere to go. Now Marble's turn. Coleman will try. He'll get another trip to the free throw line. Pick a Mitchell on that foul. I believe it's McHale's third. Well, this starts with a good skip pass because all that help is loaded up on that side and then you penetrate. This is just quick movement. And those Arkansas guards, so good at not standing and watching. And if you get caught ball watching, staring at the man with the ball, they are going to back cut you. Smith does it well there, gets the assist. Henry Coleman, the third from Richmond, Virginia, started his college career at Duke, playing for Mike Shashevsky. Played five minutes a game, averaged just a point. 
His best performance came in a rivalry game on Tobacco Road against Carolina. Four points, two assists, a couple of blocks, and he has blossomed in Aggie Lane. Six free throw attempts, first four trips of the second half. AM getting back to its identity. Uh, they are. They hadn't been able to really cut into the lead as much as they might have liked, given the good looks they've had on that end of the court. But I agree. I think they're starting to get what they want in the half court set. Here's a look at that matchup. More of a pure 2 3, at least on the top. Black with six on the shot clock. Nick Smith Jr. Rebound by Coleman. That's a much tougher attempt against Dexter Dennis, an elite defender on the perimeter. And Taylor had to play the first half with two fouls. Teardrop goes. Well, that's a great point. He's going to be playing a lot more free and aggressive now that he survived that first half of not picking up the third. And an Arkansas turnover. Seven turnover for the Hogs. Wade Taylor the fourth has not been himself this game, but he has really been the best point guard in the SEC during conference play. Dynamite three-point shooter can get to the rack. And they're going to need him, not just from two, but from three if they want to come back in this one. Taylor tried it over Smith. How much working for AM on the offensive side? And that's working for Arkansas, Makai Mitchell. You can run on misses on this AM team, especially off a of miss three. And I think it was Marble that slipped. He wasn't able to get back. Easy five on four opportunity. Taylor slips it to Coleman. Nice bounce. Five of Coleman's nine have come in the second half. Ricky Council the fourth. One of the top scorers in the league has yet to score tonight. There's a lot of good Aggie defenders, so it's tough to choose, but I just would not do contested shots over Dexter Dennis. They're 0 for 2 this half on that. Put back Coleman, and he's the star of the show in the second half for the Aggies. When Buzz Williams says we have to be more physical, impose our will, dominate the paint, Henry Coleman has answered. And this is just inside shots leading to inside rebounds. When they don't get their shot blocked, they're pretty efficient. Aggies roaring back. Bogs are in the NCAA tournament. And Missouri, a fantastic win against Tennessee. Our alma maters went head-to-head. -head. What do I win by the Tigers knocking off the Volunteers? Well, you better go to Chris Livingston if you want to get any jokes. <laughs> get some beats from him. But. I mean, we've been with them since the Bahamas in August. Yeah. Don't you think we would qualify? So. Yeah. Six-point game now. Aggies on a 9-2 run. 1-2-2 will two, two. We'll fall back into him. Either one of their zones, one is a matchup, one more to true 2-3. The most important thing, they've got Arkansas out of rhythm. They're all standing around trying to figure out what are we in. Nick Smith says we're in an offense where I shoot it, and I score. Yeah, and that's a better shot off the bounce. I like it when he takes the big man off the bounce as opposed to the best perimeter defender, Dexter Dennis. Good look. Here's Dennis. Created a little bit of space, nice touch, and the Aggies offense has found its rhythm. That was smooth there, wasn't it? Just got in the lane, slight push off with the shoulder, elevated, perfect shot. Black challenge by Dennis, and Marble's able to find the rebound. That's sending them off of that lane line penetration. Even just a foot off that lane line makes it a more difficult shot. Coleman lost his footing. Whether he was helped or not, I did not see. Turnover number 10 for AM.
Smith whistles it into Black. Challenge and blocked by Dennis. A&M's outscored Arkansas 13 to 6 this half. Wade Taylor the fourth with the clear out and Devo Davis leaned into him for Davis's second well, We've talked about what an elite perimeter defender Dexter Dennis is but he's got great timing and instincts You won't find a better athlete on the court than zero and white Anthony black usually able to take advantage of a smaller guard Him being your point guard at six seven that time Dexter Dennis says guys you better get the memo if you want to ISO somebody and post them up It's not me Already the fifth team foul on Arkansas, so AM be much more efficient getting to the line this half. They already have been after only two free throw attempts in the first. Coleman fade away. Garcia fighting for the loose ball. Boots Radford finds it. Out to Gordon for three. They're getting the offensive rebounds. The second chance opportunity is just not able to convert. That's 14 offensive boards for AM. Just 13 second chance points to show for. Black to the baseline, and that's an offensive foul on the Arkansas point guard. You cannot float in the air when you penetrate against Texas AM. They are waiting for you to do that, stepping up for the charge. Black's got two. Ricky Council returns. He has two. Devo Davis, two. Mikhail Mitchell has three. There's still 13 minutes left in this half as Black goes to the bench. AM had that 13 point deficit at halftime, but you called it two minutes into this one in the second half, and it felt like it was AM's style of play right out of the gates, and it has been. Largest halftime deficit overcome by AM was nine. That was in their win against Arkansas. Trailed by 13 at the half tonight. Driving a kick, and they'll share it to Devo Davis. A deep three. Over the last 15 seasons, AM's largest halftime comeback is 14. That came against Tennessee in 2014. And if I'm Buzz Williams, I'm drawing something up to go to the rim or a post up because. How about that? There you go. Because you got a good look, did not get the call. And that time, an easier two than they've had all night. Henry Coleman has 15 points tonight. 11 coming in the second half. Step back two. Arkansas hasn't scored in the last 245. Taylor slips through somehow. Got it! We got a one possession game. Well, the Aggies. Have the energy. Chase, keep fighting, keep fighting. Players coaching each other up. What they've seen from other matchups that can help each other. He said, it's over. We're within two. Keep fighting. We can take this lead. Just fighting the center of the ring, right? right? No back down. Uh, Wade Taylor, the fourth. I just love his energy. I've been around their shoot arounds, their practices this season. He always has a smile on his face, competes. Same guy every day. Such a mature leader at just a sophomore. Buzz was talking at the end of the season. Here's a dish by Smith, and we got a hold on the floor. And he said, listen, we don't have the most talented players. I'm not the smartest coach, but I've got a great staff, and we're a great team. And that is the difference in their success. Andrew Gar Anderson Garcia commits his second. A&M trails Arkansas by two. He did this year. They turned it around around Christmas time. His year four at Virginia Tech after game nine He totally reinvented and reinstalled a brand new defense that carried him To a successful season and back to the NCAA tournament What I've loved about what he's done with the rotations and the expected minutes as a player You love to know when you are going to get your minutes and when you come out of the game It's nice to know that you're coming out for a rotation purpose as opposed to being like why coach take me out yeah and so it takes a lot of the guesswork out and still hold the guys accountable like if you don't produce in those minutes you're not going to get them the next game council is able to get a foul from radford who's running step by step that is the first 
Uh, Radford. Ricky Council has not scored in this game. Came in fifth in the league, 16 and a half points per game. Second team all SEC selection. Played at Wichita State as a teammate of Dexter Dennis last year. Anthony Black returns. But remember those Arkansas fans that were sitting in the first row and then won the air fryer? Apparently those weren't their seats because now they're Kentucky fans sitting in those first <laughs> row seats. You mean those guys haven't been following the rules all day? I can't believe it either. How'd those Mavericks get into the building? They Radford down the paint. Hangs in with the left and get a trip to the free throw line. That's a fourth. I'm a Kai Mitchell. Look at our guys. Those are not the same seats, sirs. Show us your ticket stub. The guy on the left is the one with bail money, the guy in the hoodie and the jacket. Now, this would be amazing if five minutes later they're even higher up. <laughs> <I> would, <laughs> like, all right, wait a minute. I would not be surprised <laughs> at all. Tyrese Radford is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to McKinley High School. He didn't qualify academically coming out of high school. He originally took a Greyhound bus from Baton Rouge to Blacksburg to eventually play for Buzz Williams. And when he got there, Buzz said you couldn't get a word out of him. But his confidence begin, began to grow. And one of the biggest confidence boosts he got is when Buzz said to him one day at practice, you're tough. You're tough like a pair of work boots, the kind of leather that you can't slice with a knife. And from now on, I'm calling you boots. And the family and the player are so indebted to Buzz Williams for the success that he's had and will have after he leaves college. It's a tremendous success story. And Buzz Williams loves those types of players. He calls them OKGs, our kind of guys. And nobody embodies that more than Boots Radford. He's made it a one-point game. The A&M defense has forced Arkansas into a one-for-seven slump. And no field goals over the last 4-14. I mean, you talk about a tail of two halves. It doesn't get any more clear than this. There's a double. Makai Mitchell. Double came from the baseline. Council. And he's able to draw the foul. Got a little chaotic there. Probably a good thing for Texas A&M because that was a wide open three for your most capable three-point shooter, Nick Smith Jr. Third on Garcia. That gives him 18 minutes a game. Smith off the back rim. Aggies looking for the lead. Arkansas led this by 13. Now they're down. Dennis reverses it in. You see the explosiveness of Dexter Dennis. Turns down the three. Baseline drive reverse. Can you believe it? Aggies up just 10 minutes into the second half. Walsh looking inside. Nothing doing. Largest halftime deficit overcome for AM this season. Smith. Touches it into black and he rolls it in. He might be on a roller coaster the rest of this one. Taylor, an answer and a flex. Uh, that's the two best point guards in the league going head to head. Wade Taylor, the fourth. He doesn't run from the fight, he runs to it. Like Buffalo into a thunderstorm. Black trapped and they'll get a whistle and if that's. Garcia, it is. It's his fourth. That will mess up the scripted rotations for Buzz Williams. Garcia, one of the best role players in the league. And listen to the court. The Aggies they really talk through their action on that last play. They got caught on the switch instead of having Biggs doubling down low. It was guard to guard that led to the layup for Black. Davis brings it out. Nine and a half to play. AM up by one. Smith tried to pass it inside. Missed his man. And an open floor foul on Anthony Black after Wade Taylor threw on the brakes. Third on Black. Foul trouble will be an issue for Arkansas the rest of this one. Uh, 
you just see where all this help is. That's not where you want to throw the ball. If the pass is out to the right there, you got to skip it across if you're Nick Smith Jr. Because an interior pass where AM is sitting there and help side is not going to work. It's got to go over the top to the opposite side. Taylor makes the first. You know, the AM band is to our right. They have band hats that are a little bit non traditional. Those are turkey hats, right? What's a turkey in bowling? Three straight strikes. They wear the turkey hat to be emblematic of three straight stops for this AM defense. And that's what's allowed the Aggies get back in this one. Look, those guys are fired up. You mentioned it before, the bigs for Arkansas are not guys that get to the rim. Mitchell will. Rocks it on the offensive rebound. He's got a dozen. But on that ball screen, they're not true threats all the time. No, they're not. And that time they played off of Mitchell intentionally because he's not a threat, but then they forgot to box him out. I mean, look at the defender on Mitchell. He's sitting there saying, nope, I'm not going to play you. But then nobody comes over to help out. And that is not Texas A&M basketball on the rebounding side. Mitchell making an impact in this game. Washington sits with his second. Kai Mitchell having a monster night, five for five with a dozen points. Taylor will get a breather. The leading score at 16 a game. Nick Smith, one of the top prospects in this upcoming NBA draft. Looking behind Mitchell. Dexter Dennis, elite defender, forces him to give it up. Now Council shakes from 16. That's why Holman out. And him finished second in the league this year. They knocked off the regular season champ. Stolen away by Davis. Open floor goes into Coleman. And he's able to draw the foul. Just an amazing play on both ends of the court by Devo Davis. First, he locks down an all-SEC player, gets the on-ball steal, and then watch what he does after that. He says, no, I'm not just going to get a two. I'm going to get this damn one. I'm going to make you foul me whether you like it or not. Huge play by Devo Davis. And he shot that with his left. Here's my dip. A campus. And it's plays like that where he gives up an easy two dunk because he thinks, you know what? I got a better idea. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Big one there, though. His game has really developed. The Jacksonville, Arkansas native. A 23% three-point shooter his first 81 games. Shot 39% from three in SEC play this year. Gordon whistles it inside. Marble jump hook, and he got it. He's their best back-to-the-basket threat. Uh, Coleman has had a great half, but in terms of throwing it down low to a big man, he's got the jump hook down. We have not called his name much in this game, but that is a good look for Marble. Julius Marble started his college career at Michigan State, and then after his father passed away, he decided he'd need to come closer to home. And the Aggie coaching staff was on a two-week trip to visit potential portal guys. And Buzz Williams remembers every detail of that trip when they visited with Julius in Lansing. At the time, they were in Milwaukee. They got him on the phone. And Buzz even remembers there at Culver's. He had a double cheeseburger, meat and cheese, small cheese curd, small fry, small onion ring, concrete mixer, Oreo cookie dough. And then they found out he hit the portal, left the food behind, got to Lansing, locked him up. And brought him home to Texas. <laughs> Never doubt Tom Hodge research. That's it. Have the order down and everything. I was just intrigued by the Oreo, like the Oreo shake at Culver's. Here's Walsh. Rebound to Dennis. They have really kept Arkansas out of the paint in this second half and made them a perimeter. Not only from three, but those mid-range shots. I mean, if you got to pick your poison, 
You want them shooting mid-range and threes, not at the rim. Radford to Dennis. Ball fake got Davis in the air. Next good. AM has opened up its largest lead of the game at four. Yeah, he has played a phenomenal game. You've seen what he can do on the defensive end. He's hit a couple mid-range shots as well. Just a complete ball game by Dexter Dennis. It's been fascinating. <laughs> Everything is to you. Here's Davis. And that's the walk. Arkansas's 10th turnover. Wade Taylor, the fourth set to return. Eric Musselman has been fantastic postseason coach. 23 and 11 since he's been at Arkansas through the SEC tournament, NCAA tournament. Last team standing out of the league last year. Back to back Elite Eight trips. Makes the Aggies so dangerous. They don't rely just on Wade Taylor to be their primary point guard. They can play him off the ball as well. Marble, no space given by Mitchell. Taylor cut off. Shovels it to Coleman. Black with uh, Carmen Walsh with the block. And then an up and down and an AM turnover. Doug Shaw says, I'm going to tee you up if you do that again. And the Aggies, especially Henry Coleman, frustrated. Eleven blocks for Arkansas in this game. Nick Smith Jr. left it short. And they have just not been comfortable in the half court. And credit the Aggies mixing it up. They'll show some zone, then it looks like man, and Arkansas can't quite figure out what it's in. And they have not been able to get any of those back cuts that they had gotten last night and early in this one. Buzz wanted to get a play call, and Dennis didn't look at his coach. Now the shot clock getting late. Marble. Long, long two is short. Arkansas is in a scoring drought nearing two and a half minutes. They need a bucket in the worst way here. Five minutes left in regulation. Walsh was open. Made it a two and got it. That's his first bucket this half. We've got a one possession game. Inside five. Taylor, deep three. And Walsh the rebound. That's a good look. He came off that screen. Loose ball to the Aggies. And Coleman will go back to the free throw line. And his trips to the line are what changed the momentum of this game early in the second half for AM. Well, and he can thank Wade Taylor the fourth for that one because after the missed three, he hustled back in transition and took a gamble, but it was a good one. To deflect that ball when it looked like Arkansas might have numbers all of a sudden it was the Aggies who had the transition opportunity that's the fourth on black and that is of concern for the hogs yeah, I think AM can survive this game if their point guards in foul trouble more so than Arkansas because of the dual threat the Aggies have in the backcourt as a primary ball handler that is the first miss from the free throw line tonight for Henry Coleman the third Radford taking a seat marble taking a seat for a and Coleman back on track from the strike 15 points for Henry Coleman Solomon Washington back on the floor Here's the one two two look Taylor gambled Walsh with the ball fake and it's stripped by Taylor Aggies have a five on two Taylor all the way 
with it left. Well, that's how you keep your head up as a ball handler. Taylor with the quick hands once again in the post and just keeping his head up, waiting for the defense to commit. He said, they ain't going to stop the ball. I'm going to lay this in. 5.8 M lead. Another loose ball. Smith finds it. And Smith will go to the line. Wade Taylor, the fourth sophomore from Lancaster, Texas. He's the leading scorer for this team, and he's taking this over late. Yeah, first team all SEC for a reason. Bails him out there. Backs to run through their chest. You can't play man and ball principles like you're taught to. You have to be between your man and the basket against Arkansas, or they'll back cut you to death out of those corners. Nick Smith Jr. at the free throw line before he went to break. Anderson Garcia committed his fifth personal foul. His night is done. Courtesy of Hogstats, this bit of research, Arkansas has won 78 consecutive games and it led by 13 points or more at halftime, 78 straight. And according to their research, since 1945, Arkansas is 391 and 9 in such games. Devo Davis commits his third. Ten team foul. Ain't him in the double bonus, and it will be Boots Radford at the free throw line. Another story of this second half is AM really unsuccessful at getting to the free throw line in that first half. Just two. As a reminder, they lead the country in this category of free throw makes, free throw attempts. But they have dominated here in the second half. That being their 15th free throw attempt. They score five more points at the free throw line than their opponent on average. And for a team that plays close games, that is a major difference maker. Again, three-quarter court pickup. AM leads by five with three and a half to play. Walsh with the ball fake. Nick Smith Jr. from the spot he hit the game winner last night against Auburn. Yeah. He was open for three. He's just got to get a more catchable ball. You throw it eight feet in the air, he's got to jump to get it. Next thing you know, you take a contested floater. Taylor. Saved by Dennis. And it pinballs around again. That was an important 50-50 ball, wasn't it? If Arkansas comes up with that, they're going to have an easy two on the other end. Ugly play, but a productive one. Four million with a thousand dollar raise every year. That'll make you get over not getting coach of the year <laughs> pretty think quickly, huh? You can go to the store, buy a couple trophies, stop by Red Weir, <laughs> make them up yourself if you need to. Watch the end of that game with Desiree Reed Francois, the Missouri Athletic Director. This is a, a very Proud program, Missouri. Historically, they haven't won a conference tournament since their last year in the Big 12, and they're going to the semis for the first time here in the SEC. Wade Taylor, the fourth to the free throw line. Well, Arkansas, they want to put a lot of ball pressure and try to create some turnovers, but you've got to do so without fouling. You do not want to put AM to the free throw line, especially fouling that far away from the basket. Only two free throw attempts in the first half, 17 in the second half. Taylor's got 14. Largest lead of the game for AM. The team that was on the floor for Arkansas in the first half, they looked like a Final Four team. How, how do they find that rhythm again? Well, they're going to have to knock down some three point shots and don't get that one there, but with AM's. Suffocating defense and packing it in. Arkansas has been really hesitant, but the, the floaters and mid range hadn't worked. If you can't get all the way to the basket, you might as well take the open three instead of the contested mid range. Third on Solomon Washington. Yamakai Mitchell.
64% from the line on the year. The other thing that happened to this Arkansas Razorback team was Trevor Brazil with that ACL injury early in the season. He was a different dynamic as a five man, a stretch five, incredible athlete, a guy that had improved his three point shooting so much. And while they have good depth at that spot, they don't have that type of ability they've been able to replace at the five. Radford on Davis. Coleman the rebound. He'll go back to the line. Yeah, that's really frustrating for Eric Musselman because Devo Davis did his job. I mean, he did get clipped on the screen. And the guy guarding the screen realizes, hey, Devo's going to get through this. I can stay attached to my man. So if you don't have to help off, there is no reason that Coleman should be able to roll to the basket without contact and get any shot at an offensive rebound. Another one coming for uh, Henry Coleman the third. He had made his first five free throws of this game. Got a double double going. Most of that nearly a double double just in the second half. Twelve and nine. He got the message at halftime. Arkansas trails by six. Nick Smith Jr. off the mark. It will stay with Arkansas. I don't mind the three-point shot. You just like them to at least penetrate or hit somebody inside. When you swing it around the perimeter, it's got a lot lower percentage as opposed to inside out. At the two-minute mark, they're able to go over and... It'll be Anthony Black to inbound it. Smith waits on the opposite block. You got your best passer that can see over the defense and see through it as well, taking the ball out of bounds. Need a quick hitter here. Council slips, nothing there. Smith guarded by Washington. You're right, just well defended. They tried everything to make that an interior touch. That's nice touch to Black, and it just won't go for Arkansas. And that kind of half. Anthony Black was standing out of bounds when he made contact with the ball. No foul, just out of bounds. Throwback hat, but I'm looking for some throwback offense. Got a good look, but at this point in the game, if you can't get anything elsewhere, I think you got to take those shots. That's not what they want to take, but that's a good open look. Arkansas trying to force a turnover. Aggies have given it away 12 times tonight. They just got to make sure they don't foul away from the basket. They've sent the Aggies to the free throw line without ever having to make them work for it. Tried to lob, and it was well guarded. Arkansas down six, 90 seconds to play. Council in the paint. Got it. They had the mismatch with the center on him. Good job of not settling. His first field goal comes with 119 left in regulation. Four-point game. Taylor gets to the logo. Nobody stopped ball. And AM goes back up by five. Pardon me, by six. Now three in the other end. And with under a minute to play, it's a six-point deficit. Radford the lob. What a finish! Solomon Washington! Eight point lead. Council foul. Well, the Achilles heel of this Arkansas team has been lack of three point shooting, and off that missed three point, it leads to a run out. Very few fast break opportunities for the Aggies, but they are opportunistic there. And have been the last couple possessions that the Razorbacks have tried to press up, create some turnovers in the backcourt. This is really impressive by this AM team to be down 13 at halftime with an Arkansas team playing really with three consecutive halves of great confidence and rhythm. And to put out a defensive performance like this, it's really something. Well, Anthony Black and Ricky Council, the fourth, have combined. 
for five points in the second half. Full court pressure for the Hogs, 45 seconds left. Into Dennis. Dennis trapped at midcourt. And a timeout taken by Buzz Williams. And Dennis needed the bailout. Yeah, because I thought that was about to be a double dribble. There's so much length on this Arkansas team. Bail out and gamble. Both the smaller lineup and of this five on the court for AM, they're combined 16 of 22 from the free throw line tonight. Throw it into the backcourt for Taylor, lost his footing, nearly turned it over, found it though. Missed upper, oh, now stolen by Coleman. Breakaway dunk with 27.6. Yeah, Harvey hurry. Mitchell with 15. Yeah, hurry up and get right back in it. Great aggressiveness by Arkansas as Taylor had slipped and got out of rhythm in another one. Another turnover, 26 seconds left now. And Wade Taylor complaining to the officials that the floor is too slippery and that can be tended to, but of more import, it's now a four-point game. Arkansas uses a timeout, back-to-back -back turnovers, and it started when AM threw it way into the backcourt. Yeah, great job just getting up and recovering this ball. But then, of all people, it's the big man that says, hey, I got some guard skills too. Let me pick the point guard's pocket. You kidding me? That's the last guy I thought would get a steal on Wade Taylor the fourth. And then we talked about the dual threat in the backcourt. You just don't expect your point guard to turn it over in that moment. And then your two ball handlers to follow it up with yet another turnover on the inbound. Down four, 26 seconds. How given his team the Arkansas play. Question is, can they defend it? You think Smith is going to the near corner, far corner. Here it is. There's the X. Smith to the corner. Davis up top. Back to Smith. 22 seconds left. Smith decides for a two. And it rims out. Loose ball tipped out of bounds by Smith. It'll be AM basketball. Buzz Williams knew exactly the set that Arkansas was going to run. Yeah, great call on that. And you still get Nick Smith the ball. I, I like the look. Uh, I think Nick Smith has been at his best when he's taken the Aggies' big man off the dribble to get to the paint as opposed to the perimeter players. And this is certainly a shot he can make. Doesn't settle. Gets have won as outright underdogs in five straight games. One of the best teams in the country since the calendar turned to February. Hogs need a quick takeaway or a quick foul into Radford. Wow, Davis nearly got it. And he says, please look at it again. <laughs> May have been off of Radford. That hurt to ask. Uh, we talked about it before. You have to come meet your pass because they are jumping these passing lanes. They have to sell out and gamble. Devo Davis. With a good defense. A&M on the verge of winning this game. They're going just one for ten from three. Well, it helps when you get to the strike 20 times in the second half. That's right. Home run ball. Caught by Radford, tip back out to Coleman. And Buzz uses a timeout with 15.8 to save the possession. Well, he has the dual sport kid taking it out. Gordon, the quarterback in high school, hadn't lost his touch on that deep ball. AM's last timeout. Gordon will inbound it again. To Taylor. Foul with 14.5. Oh. Arkansas thought it was a jump ball. Uh, I don't blame Eric Musselman there. It was a quick whistle. Uh, Mitchell got his hands in there before the foul came. Wade Taylor, the fourth at the free throw line. Buzz Williams. 
Got the job at Texas A&M four years ago. His first visit was to Wade Taylor, who had committed to the previous staff. But there is second day on the job. So make it a six-point lead if he can knock it in. He's a perfect six for six from the line. Jordan Walsh is going to enter. Razorbacks want as many three-point threats as possible on the court. If this isn't a give it and get it back for Nick Smith. Davis pushes, lobs. Here's Black, got to hurry. Off the rim. It's academic now. Davis using a lot of clock. Council off the mark and Texas A&M mounts one of the largest comebacks in SEC tournament history Outscoring Arkansas 42 to 23 in the second half And the two seed will advance to semifinal Saturday